Hey everybody, welcome back to part two of the computer build. I'm all excited and ready to get going. So in this video, I'm going to show you some of the more common tips to help you put all your parts in the right place. Let's go. Okay, and step number one, the first thing I did was get into the case and I got the owner's manual and saw what the case had to offer. Then I went in and if you remember all these wires right here, these were for the uh, top buttons. I just pulled them out of the way so I had a lot of room in here to work. The fan wires are tied back and off to the side so that's good. And then the last thing I did you can't really see, but I made sure that the standoffs or the motherboard are in place. Once all that was done, remember that little board or that cardboard box that I had? I opened that up. It had a bunch of screws in it and different things like this. So I separated all the screws into the different little packets and got them ready to go. In step two, I've laid out all my tools. I have a couple small screwdrivers, the smallest of which is for the SD drive, the little dinky screws, that's magnetic. And I'll use those for the motherboard screws as well, just to start them so I don't drop them in the case. And then I'll finish it off just snugging them down with my larger screwdriver. I also got some little snips. Those are for the zip ties that'll be used when I do my wire management and tie the wires down. I've got a little magnetic cup here. And as you can see, these screws will go to those uh, motherboard inserts that I showed you when it comes time to put the motherboards. I've already separated all the screw packets out. I've read that little manual so I know what's what. And I've got a couple other odds and end things like needle noses just in case I need them. I'll be using some rubber gloves because I don't have a anti-shock or anti-static clip for my wrist. And in addition, I'm on a plastic table and I will be touching that case at every chance I can get. Uh, these gloves are also great so I don't get any oil on the bottom of the motherboard or any of the connection points or the glass or anything like that. So I have all my tools ready. I've got the case ready. Let's go on to step three. Donned my rubber gloves and the first thing I did was going to the motherboard box and got the manual and just checked things out, make sure what everything is and it's all there. And I have put the parts up front that I'm going to assemble first. So as I was telling you, here's the motherboard. You don't want to touch the back with your fingers if you can help it. If you don't have gloves, try to hold it by the edges. I have a little box that I'm using to help prevent shock. This is the I.O. plate. This is going to snap into the back of that computer. That's where all your uh, video and audio uh, hooks up. It basically matches up with this plate, makes a nice little thing. I have the processor ready to go, but I have not taken it out. I'm taking great care not to get this dirty, not to touch the back, not to dent that in any way, okay? And then the same thing with the memory. I have it in the package ready, but I haven't taken it out. I'm taking great care not to get any oil or touch these um, little connectors here, these gold-plated connectors, because you don't want to short anything out. So we're going to install these real quickly. And to do that, what you're going to do is install your CPU first. All right, here we are in step four. We're going to install the CPU in order to do that. This little cover you push down on this lever, it's kind of like one of those little mousetrap springs. Do not take this plastic cover off, just lift it up. As you can see, there's a screw right here that it slides under. You don't want to touch that socket very carefully. Take your CPU out of the package, try to hold it by the edges, and when you look on your CPU, I don't know if you can see that, but there's a little arrow right there, okay? So you're going to look on your board here and see where the little arrow is there, and that should match up. Right with that arrow, you're going to set it down gently. Don't drop it. Okay, it's, it's in the slot. Just put one little finger on it and wiggle it just a little bit, but don't mash it down. Gently put this top back over. <clears throat> when the top goes forward by pushing the little mouse thing, it's going to go under that little nut there. Just set it, push it down. 
and then kind of go off to the side and that should pop off like it did and you'll want to save this piece for later because if you have to mail it back you'll put the pin side down so your CPU is installed. The next thing we're going to install is the memory. Two sticks of 16 gigabyte memory and of course this is going to give me a hard time because I didn't open it all the way up. I read the manual and my manual says to put my memory in the slot B2 and A2 and looking at the diagram that's this slot, skip a slot and this one. You'll take this little, <coughs> these little uh, holders here, the memory will only fit one way. You have a slot here that matches up on that slot and this is shorter than this which you'll see matches up. You'll line these up and put it in. Push it firmly. When you do, you hear it click like that. This went forward and locked in. That's one. You'll do the same one with this one. The shorter end goes on that side. Make sure that this slot is open. Make sure that you, once again, you have uh, went to your owner's manual, make sure you're using the right slot unless you're using all floor. Line it up, push it in, hear it click and that went forward. It's now seated very well and everything is in place. These have snapped into place. Everything is ready to go. Your CPU is ready to go. Now what we're going to do is take this motherboard and install it. I've looked at these holes to make sure that the standoff are lined up properly. But before to do that, I have to put the I.O. plate on. And the I.O. plate basically makes sure that you line it up correctly, you know, get over here and look at it and line it up correctly. And it just snaps in from the inside so that the nice part that has all the writing is on the outside. So I'm not going to show you do that, but I'm going to put this in and then I'm going to put the motherboard in place. And then I'll show you what it looks like after it's installed. That'll be step five. I put the I.O. plate in, like I said. It goes in from the inside and snaps. You snap in the corners. I made sure it's right. Remember, this is an inverted motherboard. So the CPU in this case is going down towards the bottom. Now, I know this is correct, but I haven't put the screws in yet. But this little screw right here, which you probably can't see because it's black on black, that's the screw right there in the middle, right here. And it's lined up and then I can look down in here and see they're lined up. So I know the motherboard is in the right place and all I have to do now is the screws that I put aside I'll take my small screwdriver magnetic because I don't want to drop any of these screws anywhere. If you do drop a screw make sure you pick it up immediately don't leave it in there. But I'll just take these and screw them into those standoffs and I'm not going to tighten them up until I get every screw in place to make sure they're in the right Position. Now that I'm done installing the I.O. board and the motherboard, I'm going to take the original packaging, especially the CPU with that plastic cover and the memory, and I'm just going to put that in the original packaging and throw it in a big box in case I have to ever return it. Show you what the handy work looks like here. There's the board that you can see in here. It's going to be a little hard to see. Remember that this is this case is facing down towards the bottom, but you can see that every screw is in place. You double check it. They're snug down. They're not tightened hard. You don't want to bust your motherboard. If you do, you know, you're not going to be able to get a warranty on that. So once your screws are all in, double check them. Make sure you haven't dropped any. Just snug them down. You're good to go. And of course, the I.O. board is snugged up nice now. You can see what that looks like. So we're on for ready for step six. And step six is I'm going to take the water cooler out and because it's a larger fan type water cooler, you know, I'm not sure exactly where it's going to fit. So I'm going to take that water cooler out. I'm going to look around. I may have to take out this fan or that fan, but hopefully here on the bottom I can put it where this filter is. It'll push hot air down. I'll just have to see. So once I get it installed, I'll show you what that looks like and then I'll show you how to attach it to the CPU. Welcome to step six. I've taken my fan. I've looked all around the case. I've determined that the fan will go in the bottom. So the air will draw up from the bottom of the case, come out of here through the fans, um, and then this will connect to the CPU. Now, this cooler is a radiator type cooler. It has two fans. 
these fans will sit just like this inside the bag here there's screws those long screws will go through the four holes of each fan through the radiator this will attach to the CPU you'll notice I haven't taken off this protective cover yet that's because it has a thermal paste that when I set this on the CPU I'll take this off make sure you take it off if you don't it'll burn up and be bad but that'll make a bond between this little pump and this is where the water circulating through to get the heat off of the CPU so in order to attach that to the CPU you'll need these little brackets that are included and I'm going to show you what this looks like once I get it in place but I'm not going to bore you putting it all together but basically what happens is one of these brackets goes in the back of the motherboard and if you noticed in the case it had a cutout in the case so you could slip this through the back and hold it on then you put the little screws in so it clamps this to the CPU so this is coming from the back of the case behind the CPU and this is going over this clamping this this tight to the CPU and that's how it'll be installed so let me install it and the only left thing left to do will be to take the power wire and hook up the fans and then hook up the power wire to the little pump itself so it looks like a lot of work but it won't take long this is actually pre-made and sealed so it's a water cooled unit so that it's not dripping all over and it's ready to go we are now done with step six so you can see that the cooler is in place and the fans will be drawing up air from the bottom through that filter so we've installed the eight screws to mount the fans to the radiator then on the bottom there's eight little screws that mount the radiator to the case the two wires that come off of the fans are in the back and they're tucked through the back and then there's also a USB cable that goes out uh, to the other side and that hooks to a USB header on the motherboard so just to show you what this looks like oh you'll notice this is upside down that's the way it's supposed to be on this particular case because it's inverted the thumb screws here are thumb tight when I put that bracket on it, there's two little four little header screws that stick into that bracket and the brackets kind of loose until you peel off of the plastic with the thermal paste on it and when you put this little bracket on with the thumb screws then that draws it tight so let's just look at the back real quick and show you what that looks like these are the wires coming through so the one wire running here is the wire that is going to the USB so that's this wire here out, tucked out of the way for right now and then these wires are the leftover wires on that splitter that came with it going to the two fan wires uh, this wire will go to the power supply which will be step seven which we'll hook up next now this is a modular power supply uh, one of the reasons when I was telling you earlier it was on sale and I got it for the same price as the other one which is good what modular means is every plug is comes in this bag here so they all just plug in versus you know the other kind that they're all hardwired in and you got to fight with them so to install this all they have to do is slide it up here in the attic up here um, this will be facing out this part here be facing out that's where your normal AC plug will go into put in a couple of thumb screws which are right here at the top of this case four thumb screws and then all they have to do is start plugging stuff in so I will install it real quickly and then get the wires hanging out and I'll show you what that looks like our power supply is now installed so we're done with step seven just to show you what it looks like make sure that it is facing up the fan is down in this direction down here it's pulling air up this way it's exhausting it from the back so it's taking hot air that's rising coming out the back which is good the four thumb screws that I originally showed you these were holding this little plate on they were on the outside four holes so that's what all these extra little screws were for that come in your case when you take those thumb screws out you put your power supply in place you now use the thumb screw to make sure this bracket is screwed onto the power supply then you use four new screws out of those extras and screw the bracket to the case it's ready to go so once again being modular if this was not modular I would have a bunch of, of cables hanging out here but since this is modular 
I'm able to take this plastic piece off and just whichever way it sat out to remember I think it's like that you pull it off real hard yeah these clip in there and now I'll go through the bag of the modular plugs and depending what I need you know obviously I'll need the 24 pin power I'll need the one for the fan I'll need one two three for the drives um, actually just two for the drives one for the hard drive one for the SSD drive because the other two drives which is going to be step eight are the M point to the NVMe drives and I'm going to put those in right now and that's going to be step eight for this next step you're going to have to go back to your motherboard and get this little packet out and what this is is there's two little standoffs and two little dinky screws I don't know if you can see those real good but this is what you're going to use to connect your SATA or excuse me your uh, NVMe cards to the board with and what happens is if you look at this small slot right here it's it can only go in the card one way or in this slot right here one way and like the other memory cards one side is bigger than the other so you'll line up the small side and the pin and slide it in there now if you look at that okay it kind of looks like a little springboard it's it's like this that's what that small little standoff is for, like you used on your um, water cooler, you know, bracket. So you're going to just press this. You're not going to hurt nothing. You see where that goes right there, down there? That's where that little standoff is going to go. And then you're going to put the screw through here into that standoff to hold that chip down. So there's one here, and there's one. Where did the other one go? Over here, way up here. So I'll install both of these. I want to lay the computer down. I'll show you what it looks like after they're installed. But I want to lay it down so if I drop any of those small screws or the standoffs, I can find them. And there you have it. We have both uh, NVMe drives installed. They're ready to go. So step nine, I'm just going to show you real quick. Actually, I can't show you the whole thing. But step nine is going to be finding the uh, proper slot for your hard drives and then wiring up your computer so in this particular case I have an SSD solid state drive this fits into one of these slots you just pick which one you want doesn't matter um, your computer may have a quick slot like this or you may have to put little screws in these slots to hold it but you know I'm just going to put one in here and that's how that goes in if I want to take it out I just pop that the backup drive that I'm going to use is the same thing. If you notice, that's where the connection goes here. Backup drive, I can pick either bay. You know, once again, if you don't have a quick bay, you would have little screws to install it or shove it in there. This one has these little tabs. I push it in. I just make sure that it's enough that where it's sticking out that I can get to the connections. Now, for a little tip on your wires, you may want to go to your motherboard and look for this piece right here. I hope you can see that. But it's a little um, like adapter. And what that's for is all these wires. Remember these? These came from your case. They're the buttons up front to do the fans. All these small little wires like this, they're really a pain in the butt to plug in. I think there's like four or five of them. See them all right there? Okay. What that adapter is, is you can sit out here plug them all into this little adapter and stick that once on the board instead of having to fish every little wire. So that helps you a lot. And now it's just a matter of wiring everything up. You know, you need to go to your motherboard manual and make sure, you know, you'll be putting these wires back through that way. Make sure that you know which plug goes where. And the same thing with the drive, you'll get the connector from your power supply, whether it's a module and it's, you know, a separate piece or it's plugged hard wire into the back but you'll get those connectors and um, you pull them out so I'll need two SATA connectors one for this drive one for the backup drive I'll need the power cable I'll need the connector that goes to the cooling fan um, and I think when we do the graphic card later it has its own power but there may be some other wires check your motherboard to see what else you need um, you know they're all a little different depending on what chipset you have and and whose stuff you're using. 
So when I get done wiring this, I'm not going to wire manage it, you know, meaning strapping everything up, making it look nice. I'll just show you what I got, everything hooked up, and then we'll move on uh, to the next step, which will be putting in the in the uh, graphic card. I'm basically done with step nine now. All I have left to do is to tie up a couple cables, but I did want to point some things out. I have two cables here. This is the power cable that goes to the uh, two terabyte backup drive. I'm not connecting that yet because when I boot Windows up, I want it to recognize the two uh, NVMe drives and then recognize the solid state drive. And then we're gonna put this up and configure it as an external drive, like a backup. The other cable I didn't hook up is this USB 2, regular USB cable. This is part of the, the USB ports on top. Uh, what I opted to do is that water cooler has a USB connection that goes to the motherboard that needs that, um, that one connector. So I don't need these USB's at top. This will just hang here. I'll tuck it away, but now that cooler, since I ran that USB cord, you don't have to use that when you hook the cooler up, but I used it so I can get in the program and change the light to match the other lights or whatever and monitor the temperatures and that kind of thing. I'll probably just set it once and that'll be it. This will just get tucked away, this USB. The other 3.0 at the top is hooked up and all the other cables are hooked at the top, and then this SATA power will get hooked up after I can load up windows and then all I got to do is just you know wire tidy management and put the cover on and we're done with that. All right in preparation for my card I took out two of these slots here to basically just thumb screws on the top they pull right out and if you'll notice they're the two directly below the PCIe slot. The card is going to go in that slot and the you know the hookups are going to go that way obviously but there's also a little rocker arm down here. Um, the reason is that there, it's like the memory. Once your card's in, that's going to click up. So when you put it in, you'll hear it. And this is the 1060 card. You know, wear your gloves, don't short it out. In my application, because I have the inverted case, this back plate's going to face up. It has a guard here. And just like the memory, it's a long strip. You'll see a short end and a longer end. Just make sure you line that up. Now I'm going to walk around this way because I can get a better view to make sure I'm in the slot there. So we'll just uh, line that up in the slot. There you go. I pushed it in. I heard that little thing down there click. And now all we'll do is I'll run a cable for the power. Just check your manual and that's how easy it is to put that card in. All you have to do now is go back and the two thumb screws that you took out from those protectors, just put those thumb screws back in the two little holes up here at the top of the card and that'll uh, keep this card pretty steady because it's heavy and that's really much all there is to it. Your fans, like I said, will probably be facing up. Now my card is installed. I've gone through and checked the different connections. I ran the uh, cable. There's two different little connectors that only fit one way and that goes back to the power supply. Tried to tuck these in the back here to make them look a little nicer. I'll do more of that when I wire manage, but all in all, it doesn't look too bad. One last thing, which I almost forgot and I just happened to see, peel off the film. So there's some film here, some film over there. Ah, there's some film on the, on the uh, cooler that I didn't peel off. So once you have all that peeled off, we can hook everything up, which I'll get right back to with you. And we will See if she's gonna light up. Everything is hooked up. I've ran a power cord, but I haven't turned it on. I've put the monitor over there. I've connected it to the HDMI port on the um, graphic card, not on the motherboard. I'm gonna put the little USB connector for my keyboard into the back panel here. So I think the first step is we turn on the monitor power. Make sure we got juice going there. Yeah, that's on. Okay, no signal. I'm going to turn on my keyboard, so hopefully it'll recognize it. Then I'm going to turn on the main power to my computer. Where are you? 
Lights on the motherboard, but I haven't started it yet. Okay, guys, here's the big drum roll. Is it going to fire up? If it does, the fans will come on, the other lights will come on, and then the monitor here in a little bit. Oh, yeah. Nice. All three fans are running in the in the graphic card. The fans are running down there. Everything looks lit up. There goes my monitor. Come on, baby. That's where we need to be. Nice. Now I have not gotten through the. Uh, I do have a error code. No, AO. That's not an error. I think that's because it hasn't found a boot. I'll have to check that for sure. But if I go over here, let's see here and hit F1. Is it recognizing my? Yeah, it's recognizing. Good deal. Boy, this is not quite that. And there you are. So from here, you set up your drives, you set up your RAID, you install Windows, uh, you configure everything, and then start putting in your programs. So I hope you enjoyed that. A9. I think that little error code right there. So I'll have to see what that means. Well, that's not an error code. What? Good news, if you look right there in the book, A9, wherever that is, right there, start of setup. Boy, listen to how smooth that's run. Well, you can't listen to it. Can't hear a thing. Fans are going, once again, upside down. You can see Corsair's upside down. I can change that color because this is an Asus dealie here. I can change those colors if you really wanted to. But look how quiet that's going. The fans are going. Let's crank it up. That's on setting one. Now, obviously, the computer through the fanner heads will make those go faster. Oh, yeah. Oh, that was as high as it goes right there. That other setting was the second highest setting. And then down the one, it's even slower. All the fans are running. All the lights are working. Good job. Hey everybody, thank you so much for watching my videos. I really hope you enjoy them. If you have a comment or a question, leave it in the comment section below. I'll be glad to answer it as soon as I can, or maybe one of my subs will. But remember, please hit that subscribe button that's going to pop up, and YouTube is going to put more videos for you to watch over here. So enjoy yourself, grab the popcorn, and just remember, we really appreciate you being part of our family and subscribing to our channel. All the support you give us has been wonderful. So have a great day, and we'll see you on the next video.